Hey now. Hi guys, this is Mr. Gonzalez going over another Living Environment Regents review. Let's do homeostasis. Homeostasis. Now before we do that, let's do a quick word about the new June 2011 Regents. Um, as far as we know, we, don't, we haven't seen the exam, of course. Uh, but as of today, I'm recording this on June 20th, the day before the, the Regents. Um, it's pretty much the same exam. You just record your answers a little differently, so just so you're ready. Uh, the first thing that's definitely gone is um, in another earlier podcast slash episode, I talked about how if you see a two like this at the end of a question, then the, regent gra the regent's grader is looking for two things. So definitely write two things. Um, but from what I noticed from our teacher rating sheet um, is that everything is worth one. Uh, so there's nothing that, that any one question that's worth two points. Um, that doesn't mean they won't ask you for two things. But if the Regents does ask you for two things, just know that you probably have to get both of them right to get the one point. Okay? Now the second thing is um, there's going to be a bubble sheet, sort of like a Scantron. Um, and what's crazy is, uh, you got to make sure you don't make mistakes on it because, um, really it's the, it depends on your school, I'm sure. But, um, if there's a Scantron mistake, someone might not catch it. Um, and it's pretty bad, especially if you're borderline. So, um, it depends on, uh, how, you know, people go over your exam and stuff. So be very, very careful when you bubble. I would recommend that, uh, you lightly with a pencil uh, sort of bubble your, your Scantron. Um, and then later when you're done, uh, just really, really darken in your, your Scantrons with the number two pencil. Um, but make sure you fill up the whole circle, of course. And my classes, you don't need to slash your answers. You know what I'm talking about. The other thing that's kind of going to be different is uh, in earlier podcasts, I talked about how you can um, sort of hit the bullets, which means like this question from one region's number 57 actually had four bullets. That means they were looking for four things for this one question. Uh, but that's definitely gone because our answer sheet has nothing, uh, the, me, the grader, I have nothing on my sheet that, that allows me to grade these bullets. But what I'm pretty sure is going to happen is you'll still have like the same question, but each bullet now will probably be a number that you bubble in, or that, I'm sorry, not bubble in, that you'll answer on your short answer. Okay, all your answers will go in a booklet still, um, and uh, that's pretty much it. So that's what's different with the June 2011 Regents. Bring two pens, two pencils, so you're totally ready for this, okay? So let's talk about homeostasis really quick fancy way to say homeostasis is it's the regulation of metabolism. Metabolism is just everything that happens in your body and your cells. Okay, so um, homeostasis controls, keeps your body nice and balanced. You'll see it said a bunch of different ways, but there's, you can say that it's a steady state, dynamic equilibrium, or that the body's nice and balanced. If you're asked about specific organs, um, you can say the pancreas. That's a, the organ is a gland. The pancreas is a gland that regulates your blood sugar. Uh, the lungs, in the lungs, our uh, oxygen enters our bloodstream there. The kidneys can regulate water level. So you could use the kidneys too as an example of uh, something that controls how much water we keep in our body or we release by PP. Uh, skin, that one controls your body temperature. And your liver can control blood sugar, too, uh, by releasing, um, if your blood sugar is low, your liver can actually release extra stored uh, sugar. So you can actually, your liver feeds you if you need. Um, and the liver also cleans out toxins and things which keep you nice and balanced. Body systems that are in control of keeping us nice and balanced. Well, the first one's your nervous system, because that one's in charge of gathering all the information that's going on. The main organ being your brain. Your brain picks up if there's any changes, like if you have, let's say, for example, you eat potato chips. Mmm, potato chips. And there's tons of salt in those potato chips. Well, your brain will pick up that your blood has tons of salt in it, and it'll take action. So your brain is in charge of everything. 
your senses can pick up, like your skin can pick up uh, body temperature, things like that. Uh, and the nervous system is controlled by nerves, which are long, long, um, it's a long network of, of tissue. Um, and nerves are made up of cells called neurons. And neurons, uh, we'll see a picture of a neuron in a second. And n the neurons talk to each other with a chemical called neurotransmitters. Okay, so that's all related to the nervous system. You don't have to know anything about like central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Um, the reflex arc is not usually tested. Uh, that stuff is just more uh, tech, like, uh, yeah, baby, you know, like nitpicky. The other system is the endocrine system. The endocrine system is the system of glands and hormones. Uh, so like it, the, I use the pancreas as an example because uh, it's pretty popular around the regions, but the pancreas makes insulin and insulin, the pancreas is the gland and insulin is the hormone, okay? Target cells are cells that are uh, being acted on. So a hormone will sort of act on a target cell, okay? So back to the nervous system. This is what a neuron looks like or on the regions, the regions artist's rendition. And one specific area is important. Two neurons, nerve cell A, nerve cell B, uh, can talk to each other in the space right between them called the synapse. Cell A will send chemicals to send B to, to cell B, and that's how they talk. The chemical that, that the cell on the left, cell A, sends is called a neurotransmitter. And this question right here was actually, they gave you a box, and the regents this year asked you, hey, why don't you draw what the neurotransmitter will look like? Now, what does a neurotransmitter look like? Well, with a lot of stuff in biology, like enzymes and um, just how cells communicate, is stuff is shape specific. That means that the molecules can only fit in a specific shape. So I drew one right there. Isn't that awesome? Uh, if you notice that neurotransmitter, that will bind to nerve cell B. But you could have draw, drawn anything. You could have drawn a, a box with like a little notch, anything that fits into that stupid little thingy sticking out, okay? The endocrine system works the same way. This target cell on the right is a cell that needs to do something for your body, okay? It either needs to start growing or it needs to release something. Um, so the way that target cells get told what to do is with hormones. And so hormones get released by your glands and get sent to cells. Now they're shape specific too. That little football post you see there, the field goal post, that's a target, that's called a, a receptor on the target cell's cell membrane. It's not really drawn to scale, but the hormone will fit in there, and that hormone fits in that specific receptor and tells the target cell what to do. If you add a different hormone, this target cell is going to ignore it because it's not sh the shape is not, um, will not fit into that specific receptor. Okay? Cool. Feedback sometimes called feedback mechanisms, sometimes called negative feedback or positive feedback, but pretty much just the word feedback is enough uh, to use. Now, what is feedback? Well, feedback is the thing that shuts off the thing that's helping you. What? The thing that shuts off the thing that's helping you, or a better way to say it, it's the process that controls the changes that occur during homeostasis. So check it out. Let's use pancreas and insulin as an example. So, you eat a big cupcake, right? You then have high levels of sugar causing your pancreas to secrete insulin because tons of sugar makes your pancreas work because your brain's like, you got a lot of sugar. Insulin is the hormone that reduces your blood sugar, okay? So that high level of sugar causes the pancreas to secrete insulin. Two, insulin causes cells to intake sugar. That means your cells start to take in the glucose so they could use it for energy. Okay. And three, finally, all the sugar is taken up. So you start to have low levels of sugar. Your sugar is getting lower because your insulin, insulin is working. So what shuts down insulin? Well, low levels of sugar. The thing that causes your change to shut down is called feedback. So low levels of sugar causes your pancreas to stop making insulin. The same thing when you're hot. 
If you're super, super hot out in the summer, your body sweats, 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 sweats. What shuts off your sweat? Finally cooling down to regular body temperature is the thing that signals your, your sweat to stop ma being made. And that's called feedback. Let's try some questions. The human reproductive system is regula regulated by restriction enzymes, antigens, complex carbs, hormones. Bing! Hormones. Organ systems of the human body interact to maintain a balanced internal environment. As blood flows through certain organs of the body, the composition of the blood changes because of interactions with those organs. State one change in the composition of the blood as it flows through the digestive system. If you want to pause this video right now and reread that, uh, just to think about it, that would be awesome. But here's basically what it's asking you. What happens to the concentration of stuff in a blood? So I gave two examples of you, that you can use for digestive system. So you can say stuff like, hey, the blood is low in nutrients until it passes the small intestines, okay? And here, as soon as the blood passes the small intestines, it picks up nutrients from the villi. So that's an example. Another example is you could say, hey, blood that's like super high in glucose or sugar will interact with the pancreas. The pancreas will release uh, insulin and it will cause the sugar to decrease, okay? So either one is fine. I'd say the first one is a better answer, but you can probably come up with 10 other answers if you want. All right. The ability of the human body to keep blood sugar levels within a fairly narrow range despite the intake of meals high in carbohydrates is an example of bing, homeostasis. That was easy. Which process is the mo most directly responsible for maintaining internal stability in an organism when its environment is constantly changing? Fancy way of what's the process called? Bing, feedback. Okay, same as like homeostasis. In the cell shown below, which letter structure is responsible for the excretion of most cellular waste? Who? I don't even know what these are. Okay, A looks like the nucleus. B looks like a line. C is a vacuole of some kind. And D is a chloroplast. No. Yes, chloroplast. Or mitochondria. You can't really tell from this picture. Um, yes, plants, by the way, have mitochondria, plant cells. This is a plant cell, by the way. Uh, the answer is B because B is the cell membrane. And so the cell membrane is like where waste is released. Which statement best explains why some cells in the reproductive system only respond to certain hormones? Okay, this, this question is asking about the shape specific stuff. So if you look for the answer, these cells have different DNA. No, these cells have specific types of receptors on their membranes. Hey, that sounds good. Bing. Hormones and secretions of the nervous system are chemical messengers that... I'm not sure why this question didn't say hormones and secretions of the endocrine system. Uh, oh, no, I understand. It says hormones and secretions of the nervous system, which are neurotransmitters. They don't seem to use the word neurotransmitters, by the way, on the regions, but just be ready with it. Um, anyway, what, are the, what do hormones and neurotransmitters do? They store genetic information. Nah carry out the circulation of materials? Nope, that's blood. Extract energy from nutrients? Uh-uh. Uh, coordinate system interactions. Woohoo! And that's pretty much homeostasis. Good luck, guys.